Hey, I'm William and I'm with Kyle. And on this episode of This or That, we're gonna talk about complex lighting schedules versus simple lighting schedules. So what do you think about them? Um, mixed bag on that, because it depends on what you're looking at. Uh, so complex lighting schedules, the first thing I think of is someone that's doing a lot of time points on their scheduler. So I'm thinking if you're in Mobius or the My AI app, you're, you got 12 points probably sure. on your schedule. You're right. doing different things. Uh, probably the most complex one I've seen is the David Saxby schedule. Right. Um, I personally would never come up with something like that myself, but someone like David Saxby is a hardcore reap enthusiast right. and did some research from my understanding and generated this slight schedule that varies the intensity throughout the day, which I think is really cool that someone actually does time to do that. Yeah. But I'm a lot more simple with my lighting schedules because I don't think it needs to be that complicated. Um, but that gets us into a simple lighting schedule. I'm thinking you have a simple sunrise, run your photo period for a certain amount of time, and then you dip down and do your sunset and the lights turn off. Right. That's a simple lighting schedule, straightforward. It's a little bit more advanced than your simple on and off, but I think it's good. I like it. Yeah, so the one thing I, I would say about it is uh, when it comes to lighting, we always kind of want to uh, imitate what's going on in the ocean. And so in the ocean, you don't really ever see solid light the whole time throughout the day. So that is definitely something I would avoid. But on the flip side, we also don't need to mimic uh, a cloud floating overhead or, or, or the UV dipping slightly because of uh, some gases in the atmosphere. These are things that you need to take into account. Now you can, um, but you don't have to. So on that end, I wouldn't, I would say I'm kind of in between in terms of what kind of schedule we run. Here we do run stuff with like 12, 15 points on the lighting schedule, but that's mainly uh, for aesthetic purposes because people are looking at them the whole time. And so I want a really nice, even slope up and down. Um, but what about you, what do you run? I am a simple person. So my time points are, I tell my light when I want to start the ramp up for sunrise um, at the end of the day, usually I ramp it up for like 30 to 60 minutes, depending on like how long I need my photo period to be. Um, so my tank here is a lot shorter. It's like 30 minutes because I'm at the office. Right. So I want to see it a little bit faster. Um, so it ramps up to the full intensity for the day. And then I give it about seven, eight hours. And then at that point, it dips down for a 30 minute sunset. Usually goes heavy blue. I usually dim down the whites pretty quick on that. And then it's the end of the day. Right. Uh, we're good. Lights are off. That's for the day. I'm at home. I usually extend the sunrise and sunset a little bit because I want to give myself more time. I'm at home. I'm relaxing. Right. I'm not working at that point. So I definitely think that's the most common option for most people is a uh, simple ramp up full on uh, light and then ramp down. Yeah. Uh, but there are pros and cons to that. Right. So for me on the tanks here, we run a longer light schedule, but with less light in the beginning and the end of the day. And so just kind of like uh, the sun over a reef is going to have more and yet and less par throughout the day. And so because of that, uh, we like to ramp it up really slowly. And then in about 2 to 3 p.m. is the peak. And then it tapers off pretty quickly until 6 p.m. Uh, and then goes into the night mode, which is that deep blue where you get to really enjoy the corals. Yeah. I like the deep blue personally a lot. Um, also, if I really want to have an advanced lighting schedule, I usually pull it from a template. So definitely. Like when I was running primes on my tank at home, I would do the David Saxby schedule. I just liked it. It was like all I had to do was say, I want this template, put it in tell when to start and end, super easy. I personally just don't like sitting there and like playing with a scheduler that long. I like to just get it done, set it up and we're good. Yep, I'm definitely the same way. I think uh, maybe five years ago or so I made a template and I've used the same one ever since. Uh, I just changed the, the intensity of it and that's about it. But yeah, you can find tons of templates online for all the different yeah. apps. Um, a lot of them, like the Max Spec app, the ATI app, they all have built-in templates already. Yeah. So, or useful. A lot of your favorite coral vendors also have templates available usually. Um, so I'm thinking like World of Corals, Top Shelf Aquatics, and others all have like Mobius templates for the lights that they use and different tanks. So if you see one on YouTube that you like, you can usually just go to their website and find the one that you want. They do actually say that's, that's pretty crazy. Which is really cool. Yeah. Um, and I think the other thing where we can get into like complex lighting schedules is a lot of lights are now having like that actual lunar cycle where it's mimicking the moon cycles. Right. This is going hand in hand with coral research to coral spawn because spawning is all tied to the lunar cycle. Absolutely. Which is really cool. So for starting to be able to get some more unique features with scheduling uh, with radions, I know like the ethereal light from Aspect also has lunar cycles, which yes. I think is really cool. So if you want to start dabbling in coral spawning at home, see if your corals are super happy, super healthy, get that lunar cycle in there and you might see some coral spawn, which I think yeah, is really definitely. Cool. This tank behind us does it uh, every once in a while. Uh, I find obviously when the temperature swings as well, you know, yeah. when it gets really hot outside, uh, 
you can see they, they will spawn during the blue light period at the end of the day around 6, 7 p.m. Uh, they will actually start spawning. That's really cool. And it's, it's really cool to watch. Um, so yeah, you can definitely uh, influence your, your coral with the uh, lighting schedule. Uh, and it, it does matter totally. Yeah. So uh, do you want to give like a blanket recommendation for our viewers, people that are watching for setting up a tank? What would yeah. you recommend starting with as a baseline? Definitely. I would say that the key, get a par meter, test your par. That's how you're going to know what uh, level you want to run it at. But in terms of the schedule itself, uh, use a template. Yeah. Absolutely. Use a template. There's uh, people out there that have spent a lot of time creating these um, to make sure that they're the optimal for your coral. So just use a template uh, or use one of the preset options in your app. Or if you don't have a light that has a template already, I'd recommend going with a 30 minute sunrise, eight hour at your full intensity that you need based on your power meter levels, and then 30 minute sunset, call yeah. it a day. Just keep it simple. Nice. So awesome. Thanks for watching. 